We often view fish and other marine animals as having short memories and lacking consciousness, so why should we care about them? After all, are they even sentient, or do they feel pain? Marine animals are by far the animals that we kill the most of. To put it into perspective, we kill somewhere around 60 billion land animals every single year. However, it is estimated that we kill somewhere in the region of 1 to 2.7 trillion marine animals in the same period. So do fish feel pain? The nervous systems of fish are similar enough to those of birds and mammals to show that they do feel pain. And when fish experience something that would cause other animals physical pain, they behave in ways suggestive of suffering, and the change in behavior may last several hours. Fish will learn to avoid unpleasant experiences like electric shocks, and painkillers reduce the symptoms of pain that they would otherwise show. A scientific panel for the European Union concluded that the evidence shows that fish do feel pain. Ultimately, it is easier for us to recognize suffering in an animal such as a pig, who can vocalize their pain. But for marine animals, their suffering may be silent to us, but it still exists for them nonetheless. Fish have also been shown to have stress responses, with their cortisol levels, a hormone that is released during times of stress, becoming raised when they were taken out of water and placed in a bucket. When it comes to their intelligence, Australian biologist Cullen Brown states that based on his years of research into fish behavior and learning, they're not just any less intelligent or sophisticated than terrestrial animals. That idea is a total myth. Fish can be taught how to evade a trap and remember it a year later. Fish can learn from each other, recognize other fish they've spent time with previously, know their place within social hierarchies, and remember complex maps of their surroundings. Fish also work together with different species of fish and show cooperation and trust, with fish remembering which other fish were cooperative or uncooperative. The fact that fish can create alliances, formulate rules, and engage in acts of mutualism, as well as alter their behaviors to maximize their own individual success, demonstrates how highly intelligent and cognitively complicated they are. Science has shown us that fishes are intelligent, that they think, they feel, they have emotions, they can get stressed, they can feel stress relief, they can be upset, they can be annoyed. They have a lot of characteristics that make them very special creatures. Yet even though these animals are highly intelligent and can show emotions and feel pain, we cause huge amounts of suffering and ultimately death to incomprehensible numbers every single year. Impaling live bait on hooks is a common commercial practice. For example, longline fishing uses hundreds or even thousands of hooks on a single line that may be 50 to 100 kilometers long. When fish take the bait, they are likely to remain caught for many hours before the line is hauled in. Fish caught in the wild are dumped on fishing boats and will either die by suffocating, being crushed because of the weight of all the other fish on top of them, or through their internal organs rupturing from the rapid pressure changes during the ascent. Another method of catching wild fish involves gill nets, walls of fine netting in which fish become snared, often by the gills. They may suffocate in the net because with their gills constricted, they cannot breathe. If not, they may remain trapped for many hours before the nets are pulled in. The fish that are still alive when they begin being processed will then die through a combination of suffocation and evisceration which is where the animals are gutted alive. One Dutch study found that it can take between 55 minutes to four hours for various species of fish to die during asphyxiation. And some fish can remain conscious for 20 to 40 minutes after they have been gutted. Aqua farming, which is the equivalent of factory farming for fish and is responsible for nearly half of all fish consumed worldwide each year, involves fish spending their entire lives in underwater enclosures, normally either in sea cages or concrete tanks. Due to the overcrowding, the fish are more susceptible to disease and suffer from stress and physical injuries such as fin damage or spinal deformity, as well as parasitic infections. It is not uncommon for many of the fish to die in the farms, and because of this, antibiotic use is rampant within fish farms. Fish are regularly handled roughly on aqua farms, and those that are deemed too sick are taken out of the tanks and often beaten to death. Farmed fish are slaughtered by a range of methods, such as gassing with carbon dioxide or cutting their gills without stunning. 
Some fish are simply left to suffocate, and some are left to suffocate whilst on ice, which causes them significant suffering as they try to get the ice out of their gills. They are also often processed while still alive. As even though the cold may paralyze them, scientific studies have shown that they still remain conscious and can feel pain and stress as they begin to be gutted alive. Alternatively, some are killed by being electrically stunned or are hit over the head before then being bled out. It is also worth mentioning that many farmed fish, such as salmon and sea bass, are carnivorous, meaning they are fed wild caught fish, and so buying farmed fish also contributes to the suffering of wild fish as well. Ultimately, fish are sentient animals who feel pain and suffer, and in the case of both farmed fish and wild caught fish, not only do these animals suffer, but they have their lives taken from them needlessly. So perhaps it is time for us to change how we view marine animals, to understand that how we view fish is based on outdated opinions, and to question whether they can suffer or feel pain is to question what has been proven by science. Perhaps it is time for us to see fish for who they really are, feeling intelligent beings whose worth far exceeds our desire to eat them.